anthems.
Thank you. Please remain standing. Please remain standing as I invite to the podium Rabbi Michael Katzman, our coordinator of Judaic Standards. And along with Rabbi Katzman, I invite up Rabbi Jeremy Litton, our Director of Jewish Life and Learning, to offer us a prayer for the State of Israel. Avinu sheba shamayim, sur Yisrael v'golo, barech emidinat Yisrael rishit smicha gulatenu, hagen alea be'avrat chazdecha, ufros alea sukat shlomecha, ushlach orecha v'amitcha l'roshea v'sarea v'yotzea, v'taknen be'eitza tova milfanecha, chazek egidei meginei eretz kachenu, v'ankilem Eloheinu Yeshua v'ateret nitzachon tatrem, Benatata Shalom Baaretz, Vesimchat Olam Liyoshvea. Vetachinu, Kol, Beit Yisrael, Pekad Na Bechol Arzo Pezurehem, Vetol Yechenu, Mehera Kimiyot Zion Yirecha, Yerushalayim Mishkan Shemecha. Kakatu Betorat Moshe Avdecha, Im Yeh Nidachacha, Bikse Hashamayim. Misham Yikabetzcha, Adonai Elohecha, Umisham Yikachecha. Vaviyacha Adonai Elohecha El Aretz Asher Yarshu Avotecha Virishta Vetivcha Virbecha Meavotecha Umal Adonai Elohecha Et Levavcha Et Levav Zarecha Liyava Et Adonai Elohecha Bechol Levavcha Bechol Nafshecha Leman Chayecha Viyached Levavenu Liyava Uliyura Et Shemecha ולשמור את כל דברי תורתך, ושלח לנו מהרה בן דוד משיח צדקך, לפדות מחקקי תשועתך, והופעת בהדר גאון מזכה, על כל יושבי תבל עשיך, ויאמר כל אשר נשמה באפו, אדוני אלוהי ישראל, מלך ומלכותו, בכל מה שלח, אמן סלע. אמן. Heavenly Father, Israel's rock and redeemer, bless the state of Israel and the first flowering of our redemption, shield it under the wings of your loving kindness, and spread it over the canopy of your peace. Send your light and truth to its leaders, ministers, and advisors, and direct them with good counsel before you. Strengthen the hands of the defenders of our holy land. Give them deliverance, our God, and crown them with the crown of victory. Give peace in the land and an everlasting joy to its inhabitants. Appear in your glorious majesty over all who live on earth, and let all who breathe declare, The Lord God of Israel is king, and his kingship has dominion over all. Amen. Selah. Uh, you may be seated. Thank you, Rabbi. Our school's strength stems from the ongoing partnership and support of our Jewish Federation of Greater Dallas. And it is my pleasure to call upon Bill Finkelstein, Chair of the Jewish Federation of Greater Dallas, to share greetings on behalf of the Federation. Bill? Thank you. My, name's, my name is Bill Finkelstein, and it's my pleasure to be with you here today, both as a friend and as a parent of a former student and as the board chair of our Jewish Federation. And I bring greetings and wish to extend a mazal tov to the graduates and to their proud parents, and I see a few proud great-grandparents out there as well. It's truly marvelous to see the work of Levine, one of the most important educational institutions in our community, and to see so many fine young students that are being molded by your teachers and your rabbis. I know that each of you learn Torah, each of you are taught ethics, Jewish values, the ways of our people, and of course, you're receiving an outstanding academic foundation 
for your continued studies. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, of blessed memory, former Chief Justice of the British Commonwealth wrote, quote, in order to live, one must love life. To be a Jew, one must love Jewish life. Well, you're surrounded by teachers and family who love and who live Jewish lives. You may not appreciate it fully today, but later, when you're an adult, you will treasure what Levine has given to each and every one of you. So over the last year and a half or two years, we've endured a tornado, a pandemic, an ice storm, rocket attacks, terror attacks, and most recently, the horrible shooting that took place in Uvalde. Through all of this, I've heard through your teachers that you've maintained a very positive attitude, that you're resilient, and you have a positive outlook on school, on family, community, and pursuing Torah mitzvot. What you have learned is something that, will take, that you will take with you in your next place of study and to your new circle of friends. Because regardless of age, you have something that you can teach to others. You can be a positive influ influence on classmates, friends, your family, and community. Like many graduates who preceded you, we, the community, see in each and every one of you future leaders. People who are passionate, connected, committed, and prepared to transform the world with the love of your heritage and your background. To the proud parents, you are to be commended on the sacrifices, not the least of which is financial, that you make to provide a traditional Jewish education for your children. Yashir Koach. And may your investment in your, in your families and your community's future be repaid 10 times over. As indicated, I'm here as the board chair of the Federation. It's the main fundraising, fundraising tzedakah organization in our community. And we take great pride in investing in Jewish education. Last year, for example, we funded a million dollars plus to Dallas's six Jewish schools. Levine, as well as the other schools, received grants for math instructors, STEM education, and tuition assistance based on a formula. So as a community, we, all of us, and me personally, want to thank the school for allowing the community, and me, to partner with you in this precious mitzvah. But we ask you to continue our mission to enhance Jewish life. I urge the parents to join with the 4,000 plus other donors in our community to join in our campaign to not only support Jewish education, but to support what we do for the elderly, what we do for senior lunches, meals on wheels, camping, outreach, and unfortunately, in today's world, security. To date, we've spent over $1.4 million on security locally by providing cameras, fencing gates, off-duty off officers during high-risk periods, periods on-site visits, advice to schools, audits of the schools, uh, physical plants to harden them, and to monitor the conditions with law enforcement. All of this takes money, your money. We ask that you please continue. Please join us. Thank you for allowing me to be with you today. Mazal tov to the graduates. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. So tonight we bid farewell and Godspeed to a class of outstanding girls and boys uh, who have all had a, an integral part of this school and furthering our school's mission. And some of you have been here since before the age of two. Uh, we're going to hear your voices in just a moment, uh, in a few minutes. But first, I just want to take this opportunity because we know that the success of our school is a result of many. But I'd like to take a moment to recognize 
our devoted and talented faculty at Levine Academy. Let's all give an applause of appreciation for our faculty and our administrative team at, Lake, at Levine Academy for all you do for our students and our school mission. Thank you so, so much. So I'm very pleased right now to call up our K-8 principal, Liz Lawler, who is a leader of our faculty and our program. And Liz, you will, this is your moment to share words for our graduates. Good evening, everybody, and, and welcome to our graduation tonight. As we recognize, recognize our fabulous eighth graders. And I, I want to speak directly to them. They have a very special place in my heart, as they do for all our faculty. Graduates, we are so very proud of each and every one of you. Take a look around the room and you will see all the smiling faces, the taking of photographs and videos to record this very special moment. Today is an important day for you and for all of us. Today is a good day to say thank you to all who have supported you because as much as this is your achievement, it is also the achievement of all who love you. Graduation can be seen as a coming of age, an official way to recognize when a person steps into a new phase of life. Graduates, you are stepping into a whole new phase. You are leaving Levine Academy, a place that has been home away from home for you, a familiar place with familiar faces, a very predictable place. You are moving into the unknown, and I'm sure you are filled with mixed emotions, excitement about what's to come, a new school, new friends, new teachers, new subjects, but there is probably a little anxiety too. Will I make new friends? Will I fit in? Will I be able to handle the rigor of the classwork and homework? Well, I can tell you with certainty, yes, yes, you can. Your teachers have prepared you so very well, and you are so ready. Graduates, remember, do not follow the crowd. Do what's right, even when no one is watching. Study hard, and remember that you are investing in yourself with every test you take and every book you read. And don't be in a big hurry to grow up. Enjoy every minute of high school. It'll be over before you know it. The future holds great things for you, and we look forward to hearing about your many accomplishments in high school and beyond. So congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to your parents, your teachers, and everyone who helped you along the way. Today you close the door to the past and open a door to the future. Today you start a new chapter of your life. Remember, there are no limits to what you can accomplish, except the limits you set on yourself. Congratulations to each one of you. Thank you, Liz. All right, so now we are ready for th the traditional core of our program is to hear from all of your voices. So I'll call you right to left first row, then back row, uh, and we will start to hear from our eighth graders from first from Sydney Kramer. Sydney? Only photographs left. How can I fit 11 years of my life in one speech? Let me just say, Levine Academy was an experience. That is for sure. I found my identity as a Jew, 
a friend, and a human being at Levine. And it is very hard to find a community quite like the one here. Without my friends supporting me and teaching me every step of the way, I would not have become who I am today. I hope to positively impact the world the way Levine has positively impacted me. My classmates have taught me that sometimes you just have to laugh and stay positive. No, no, wrong term. I meant and have fun. <laughs> Instead of focusing on schoolwork 24 seven. For example, all students have birthdays on school days and come without expecting much celebration. However, since the students here value everyone, they decorate your locker and add nice heartfelt notes and little gifts. This was a favorite memory of mine because everyone deserves celebration. Levine has raised me to be grateful for the little things in life. An example is Shabbat in Israel. Instead of rushing around to meet the demands of daily life, we all came together to celebrate Shabbat as one. Whether we were praying in different synagogues or playing in the park, seesaws, <laughs> our class bonded together in different ways, finally being able to see each other eye to eye. My classmates and teachers have taught me that there is a wide spectrum of intelligence. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination, Albert Einstein. Some people are experts in visuals, people, logic, linguistics, and more. We should respect all forms of wisdom. Lotikom velotitor et b'nei amecha ve'ahavta l'reecha kamocha. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19.18. With the spark of God within each one of us, Everyone offers a gift to the world. I hope that we will each do great things with the time given to us. Everybody at Levine has taught me so much, teachers and students. I will carry their teachings with me throughout my life. When I look back to this cornerstone of my life, the only thing I will have left are the photographs. The radiant smiles take me back to these moments of love, laughter, and personality. Thank you to my family for sending me here, and Levine for enriching my education and Jewish identity. I hope to keep the values and community close to my heart forever. You have all made these 11 years once to remember. That is for certain. walking through a desert called life. Over the last 13 years, Levine has watched me grow into a young woman. By guiding me and helping me, this school prepared me for graduation. God guided the Jewish people and showed them the right path to fall in life, just like a parent or teacher would. Ever since I was little, my community has been preparing me for the next step. By being my pillar, by being my pillar, help me up when I've fallen, and being there for me when I needed it most, Levine has guided me through the desert to my final destination for Levine, graduation. I have developed my speech from the following Exodus quote. V'adonai holet livnei hem yamam be'amud anan levotam hader velayla, be'amud esh lahar lahem lalehe yamam velayla. God went before them in a pillar of cloud by day to guide them along the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light that they might travel day and night. To travel through the desert is not always easy. For instance, Jewish people ran out of food and water, complained often, and started to question God's authority. Life is like this sometimes, throwing obstacles in our way and trying to throw us off track. But as it says in Dear Evan Hansen, even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you, and when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. 
When I was in first grade, on our way to PE, up here and I became lost, so we asked for help. Miss Lawler showed us the way. Whenever I was lost, literally and figuratively, someone from Levine has been there to guide me in the right direction. Today I stand before my family, friends, and teachers, all of whom are the reason why I'm here today. Sometimes the smallest things we do for others can make all the difference. I thank all of you for being my pillar and guiding me through the desert of life. Thank you. Now we will hear from Brianna Richardson. Brianna? Be true to yourself. When I entered Levine Academy as a nervous two-year-old, my teacher and my classmates welcomed me with open arms. Our time consisted of playing and having fun, but we have come a long way since then. During my years at Levine, I've learned valuable life lessons and become a more generous and compassionate person. This community has become my family and it feels like my second home. I've become a stronger Jew because of the different experiences Levine has given me. I've learned, I have learned the lessons of being true to myself, believing in myself, and being proud of who I am. Whatever the might of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. I know that if I have an enormous goal or significant dream, I do not believe that I deserve it or can accomplish it, I won't. After eight years of endless hours in the gym, trampolining and tumbling, watching the elite athletes and listening to my coaches, my dream became a reality, and I qualified for the youth elite on trampoline. Although I might not be the most talented athlete, I worked hard to accomplish my goals. Levine has prepared me to be a better writer, speaker, and leader. As a member of Student Congress, I've demonstrated these skills and become, become more comfortable in social situations. Through the dual curriculum at Levine, I've learned Hebrew and Jewish studies along with the core subjects. I've learned to think critically, always question, and look at things through a different perspective. We have just returned from a life-changing trip to Israel. Our group returned with shared values, making us more cohesive. Our connection to each other and our teachers has given me great pride in being part of the Jewish community and a desire to pass on our traditions. This school will always be a part of me and I'll keep the lessons learned and the people I've met close to my heart. My advice to my fellow students is always have fun and cherish every moment because time really flies by. I would like to thank all my classmates for making these the best years of my life, my teachers for educating and helping me through it all, and most importantly, my family, for always standing by my side, being there for me, and allowing me to attend that place I feel honored to call my second home. Thank you, Brianna. Now we have the pleasure of hearing from Shira Rahami. Small things make a big difference. One of the most prolific artists, Vincent van Gogh, once said, great things are done in a series of small things brought together. A series of small things in my time at Levine has brought me to where I am today. As a member of a small class, my life has been positively impacted. Few people are fortunate enough to become as close as we have. Though there may not be many of us, we definitely have a larger than life personality. We are different, different and unique in our own way. And together we make Levine's class of 2022. Everyone is a branch and we all make a tree. Our funny inside jokes and intense kickball games will forever remain in my memory. We have grown as a family and you all feel like my brothers and sisters. Now, I know that the tuition my parents have paid is not insignificant but there are many seemingly unimportant things that they have done on a daily basis to ensure my success. Both a lovingly prepared lunch and arriving at school on time has made me feel loved. They are my biggest fans. 
Being accepted into Boca T High School was a huge accomplishment that I would never have achieved without the small things my parents have done for me. As my mom always says, Adiv kishalon mifuar michanamot ma Better to try and fail than not to try at all. This time, I tried, but I did not fail. I love you, Ima and Abba, and I'm so thankful for everything you have done. <laughs> I have also grown in confidence. I remember my first day, so shy and quiet, but Levine was the most welcoming place. The endless encouragement from my teachers has made my days brighter and, and inspired me to try harder. By the way, thank you, Ms. Hunter, for the Starbucks you gave me. <laughs> I would cherish the time that we've had to bond and defend our snacks and advisory. With the support of this community, I know who I am, and I've become the confident young woman you see in front of you today. These small gestures have impacted my life immensely. As a graduating class, we will be facing new challenges, larger challenges than completing the Devar Torah on time every week and surviving endless rehearsals. This little class has achieved so much, and though we may be small, do not doubt that the class of 2022 will continue to do great things. I'm done. Thank you, Levine. Bye. Thank you, Sheriff. We now have the pleasure to hear from Addie Monfrey. All under one roof. Levine has been like a second home to me because home is where the heart is. Just like the lyrics of the song we sang at the Israel send-off service. Kan ze bayit, kan ze lev, ve otach ani lo ozev. It's weird how the past nine years of my life have all been in the same building, under the same roof. Well, that's not true. There were the three weeks in Israel, the two-day trip to Green, countless field trips, and the nine months spent at the kitchen table during the pandemic. But we're not going to talk about that now. Even though we had volleyball practice, baking lessons, over Zoom with Kavir Sor and the craziest Zoom scavenger hunt ever. Under this roof, however, I had my first and only in-person bat mitzvah lesson, which is the same place I got a tooth pulled, learned kung fu, graduated undefeated in debate, and discovered an appreciation for kosher tomahawk ribeye. <laughs> I am truly grateful for everyone under this roof as well as my parents who helped me reach this day. As John Mayer once said, someday, everything will make perfect sense. So for now, laugh at the confusion, smile through the tears, be strong, and keep reminding yourself that everything happens for a reason. As I walk out these doors and into the crazy world of high school, I know that I will never forget you all. In the famous words of Donna, Yala Balagan, let's go make a big crazy mess. Thank you. Thank you, Addie. Now we have the pleasure of hearing from Jordan Zimmerman. The Sculptor. Levine Academy is where I've grown up, where I've made my closest friends, and where I've formed my most precious memories. It has taught me everything I know, from singing the ABCs to winning the eighth grade basketball championship. Now that I come to think about it, I do remember all of the former eighth graders telling us, your eighth grade year will go by in a flash. And I remember thinking to myself, yeah, yeah, just like every other year. Well, I was wrong. Every other year felt like an eternity but this year feels like it has just started. Like they always say, time flies when you're having fun. I've grown so close to my friends, and there's nothing that could break our bonds. You are all like brothers and sisters to me. I've known you all for what feels like a lifetime. It's going to be a whole other world, walking into the doors of our new high schools and not seeing familiar faces as we walk in. Although we are graduating, and it is the end of the year, that doesn't mean that we can't maintain our friendships. Kishetarot Magiot, so Hamishpacha Shetar Shilach Shetomichetach. 
When trouble comes, it is your family that supports you. We are family. But let's face it, my friends aren't the only reason that I'm here today. My teachers are the reason that I can even talk, so let's give them a little credit. <laughs> All of my teachers have inspired me to push past my limits, and they've taught me so much about the true value of life. Their patience and understanding have helped me tremendously throughout each of my many years. Let's not forget the school that helped make this all possible, Levine Academy. It has prepared me for my life as an adult by giving me the opportunity to experience what it is like to live in a closely packed Jewish community filled with loving and caring people. And it has helped me make lifelong friends who will always be there for me. Being here is the reason I've developed my artistic, creative, and athletic abilities. This school has brought us all closer together, year by year, and for that, I am grateful. Levine Academy has molded me into the person that I am today by teaching me the great outcome of working hard and doing my best in order to succeed. I'd like to thank all of my incredible teachers, family, and friends for always being there. As Olympic medalist Apollo Ono once said, every single experience Every single thing that has happened in my life, struggle, obstacles, trials, and tribulations, I think they've all molded me to become the person that I am today. Turning over a new leaf. The different parts of a tree guarantee that it not only survives, but thrives. Levine has given me roots, a firm foundation, a trunk, and branches of experience to develop into the best version of myself. I am finally prepared to leave Levine. Everything needs roots to create success. As a baby, I sprouted my Jewish roots at Levine. It has been the heart of my Jewish education. When I was in kindergarten, I looked up to the eighth graders and eagerly waited for my turn to go to the Jewish homeland. I loved going to Israel, speaking the language, learning about my ancestors, and learning about my ancestors. Although I will not be attending a Jewish school next year, I will take the Jewish values I've learned with me. I can relate my years to Levine to the layers inside a tree trunk. Just as the rings of a tree tell its story, my rings represent my memories and experiences that have shaped me into the person I am today. Whether it was when Mr. Arnell pulled out my first tooth or when I celebrated my bat mitzvah at Levine, I have learned and grown from these experiences. At Levine, we are encouraged to branch out. In Israel, there were so many new and exciting things to try. When I went repelling there, for example, I was frightened, but I ended up having a lot of fun. Lavinas taught me to step out of my comfort zone. As much as I have enjoyed my time at Levine, it's time, to, it's the time for this journey to come to a close. Just as a leaf leaves its tree and goes where the wind takes it, now it's my turn to leave my tree and go on my next adventure. I am sad to end this chapter of my life, but it's time to turn over a new leaf. I know I will be ready for high school because of these Levine experiences. <coughs> As someone once said, my leaves might change colors, but my roots will stay the same. Levine will always remain a special place to me, even after graduating. Levine has served as my welcoming home and part of my Etz Chaim He Shili, part of my tree of life. Yes, I know Roni's up here. Relationships. 
Wow, nine years, just like that. I remember walking into Levine, sitting at my table with my head down and no friends. Walking through the hallways, slowly through my ears, I was creating friends and memories. I am the last child of four to graduate from Levine, a child from a family of two amazing parents who have given me the opportunity to come to Levine to grow and proudly call my second home. With two parents born in the former Soviet Union, where I was raised speaking English and Russian, I went to preschool at Sunshine International Learning Center, where all I can remember was being fed yummy Russian soup. <laughs> Next year, I will be attending Akiba Yavne Academy, at which I will happily carry my Jewish and Hebrew values with me that I was taught at Levine. At Levine, I was able to add another language to my list, Hebrew. I would not say I'm the best at it, but I was in all the high classes throughout my career here. <laughs> Hebrew was very useful in my previous trip to Israel, with the most lively and funniest group of people I know. I was also able to have conversations with other Jews there. I felt like I was home. I would like to thank Levine for giving me the opportunity to connect with my roots and find a stronger connection with people and God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Ehafta l'recha komocha. Levine not only created friendships for me, but taught me how to treat, treat others. I would like to thank all the staff and kids who made these past nine years the best that I could ever ask for. Go Mavs. Now we have the pleasure of hearing from Maya Rothstein. My own road. Just like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, I realize there is no place like home. As I look forward to high school, it could very well be the Emerald City, big, magical, and where dreams come true. But as I reflect on The Wizard of Oz, it's Dorothy's journey that changes her. Similar to Dorothy's path, I have found great people to share in my adventure. You don't choose your family. They are God's gift to you as you are to them. This is how I feel about my 12 years at Levine. My friends and teachers have always been my family on my yellow brick road. Along the way, we have found bravery, nurtured kindness, and learned. With this foundation, I know I can accomplish my dreams. My teachers have always encouraged me to go out of my comfort zone. Being in show choir was a perfect example. At first, it was a bit intimidating for, to perform in front of so many people. After I saw how supportive everyone was, I fit in perfectly. This year, I was even asked to be a captain. Kindness has always been a huge part of my grid. I have known most of my classmates for at least four years, and they have always felt like my siblings. I will remember us as a grade that genuinely cared for one another. I've observed my grade as being inclusive and supportive. We've always genuinely cared for one another. I know that I'm best blessed with best friends. Our teachers have always told us that we're a grade like none other. Through my years at Levine, I not only learned basic academics, but also about my Jewish roots. At Levine, my teachers took the time to, create our to connect our learning and creativity to our Judaism. Thanks to these amazing teachers, I feel prepared to take my next steps on my yellow brick road. In eighth grade, we finally reached our Emerald City of Israel. We had bravery to try new things and go on adventures for the first time. We experienced kindness when we went and volunteered, but also when we were hanging out as one grade, having the time of our lives. Additionally, we used our minds to learn more about Israel and connect our relationship with Judaism to what we were seeing around us. Although I was not quite ready to come back to school after the trip, I realized that all good things must come to an end. In my final hour of being a student at Levine, I realized that this, been, that this has been my home. I will always remember that I am welcome here. I will always remember what it's like to be at Levine with my friends. I will always remember there is no place like home. Fire 
From fire to steel. When the roots are deep, there is no reason to fear the wind. When a tree is in its early stages of life, it cannot withstand harsh winds because of how weak it is. To help it grow up without problems, it needs support. Back in lower school, my teacher's care guided me throughout my struggles. I had a middle school year of sitting behind a screen, and in eighth grade, I had to apply to new high schools. In each case, Levine has given me the support to grow up into the young man I am now. Throughout the years of lower school, at lower school, I had many obstacles to overcome. When younger, I used to have reading problems, but after countless work, work on these difficulties and all the help from the teachers who would not give up, it finally became easier. And that is what has brought me here, to this point, free of toil. Neither my teachers nor I ever gave up throughout my youngest journey. While my years in lower school were quite an effort, my time during COVID was quite abnormal for me to keep up with. Dealing with COVID was something that most of us didn't expect to become the new normal, and it took a toll on me. For a year, I was at home and had to deal with not seeing any of my friends unless it was on Zoom. What kept me going, however, was seeing it was all my friends made certain that I was always doing well. And when I returned, everyone made sure that I got back into the hang of school. Being careful, not just by my teachers, but my classmates as well, kept me going every morning. Unlike last year, I am not alone at home. I am here at school. This year has prepared me for what comes next in life, high school. The next chapter will be a big leap that I'll also have to adjust to. In preparing me for the next year, my teachers have helped me to get into a school by teaching me the required criteria for acceptance. From interviews to statements, Levine has carried me quite far. Thank you to the teachers for making sure I always remain focused. I hope I never forget this interesting year. When I leave Levine, I'll always carry the roots that Levine has given me, and I'll not be blown over by any obstacle that might come my way. I now look back at my journey throughout these years with a strong sense of accomplishment. Although my time here has not always been the smoothest, the struggles that have come across me have guided me to this point. Though incidents might bring me down, I will remember that over all these years, my roots have grown strong. Thank you, Levine. I could not be more grateful for all the ways you have supported me throughout my years here. Thank you, Brandon. Now we will hear from Lyle Ethan Taylor. Ready for departure. I always spent my whole life at Levine Academy, a small Jewish school that, that the majority of people have never heard of. I doubt I could have ever foreseen the amount of community and knowledge I would gain at Levine, but I promise you, the years were worth it. Ain Somkin Al Hannes. One must not rely on miracles happening. These seven words tell much more than meets the eye. In life, it is easy to throw in the towel and to give up. This is the easy way, to suddenly wait for something great to happen. If you truly want and need a miracle, then you must work for it. Take the initiative and get ahead of the curve because the rest of the world won't wait. Take advantage of the resources provided rather than hoping for more. Hard work, while daunting, leads to more success than wishing upon a star. Levine has helped Levine has provided me with the resources to take the initiative. The incredible staff has presented the resources and has helped me to utilize them. I have learned valuable life lessons which will guide me through high school. The traditions of my faith are something I will carry with me for my life. I give all the faculty a massive thank you. Talking about my time at Levine, we must mention the students. Levine has brought many friendships that I hope last long after I leave. To the wonderful 19 fellow graduating students in my class, after all, we are finally here. It has been a privilege and a gift to spend these many years with you all. Honestly, I would not have had it any other way. Each and every one of you is a treasure and a special person to me. 
You are all bright, funny, and intelligent people. I hope you are successful in whatever it is you choose to do in life. In high school, we must embrace the unknown and use the resources we are given to the fullest. Now, with a heavy heart, I am forced to say goodbye and let us work towards achieving that potential. One day you will realize that everything you have been to was a chance blessing in disguise. Last summer we packed our own, our belongings and our memories and moved to Dallas, Texas. I had to say goodbye whether I liked it or not. It was very hard to leave my friends and my family in Israel. I grew up with them, was used to seeing and being with them all day and not just with my parents and brothers. It was also hard to leave my independence. I was used to do it together with friends. This year was nothing like I had expected. When I arrived in the United States, I was shocked. I had pictured America is something else. I was, sorry, I was sure that everyone would speak Hebrew and I would be just fine. I had to be reborn as Yara, the American girl. And I had to, to learn a new language and culture we have in Latin America, make new friends and say sorry all the time. <laughs> because I came to Dallas, my graduation years, making new friends was hard. Joining a United Group took a while and I felt like an outsider. At first, it was not easy to understand me because of my language back. Sometimes, because of that, there were situations where I meant one thing, and it was understood differently. If you want to change people's perception of you, I realized that I first needed to change myself. Since that beginning, my living experience has fortunately improved, and I have made new friends. A great weight has been lifted off my shoulders. My dear family, thank you for everything you do for me. I love you. Yeah. You're the best of me. Thank you for everything you do for me. I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. Thank you for everything you do for me. 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 החיים שלי השתנו מנצל כזה בזכותך, ואני לא אוכל לתאר כמה זה עושה לי טוב. אמא שלי אור מדהים. אני רוצה להגיד לך תודה על כל מה שאת עושה ועשית בשבילי. את הכל עבורי. שניכם תמיד שם בשבילי לכל דבר בעניין שלי בחיים, גם בעליות וגם בעליות הכי קשות. את תמיד תיבש ממיים, מעריכה אותך ואוהבת. סורי. Everything happens for a good reason. Hashem is watching you and makes the best for you. Everything happens in the right place, in the right time. Wait for it. It will only get better. Thank you, Yara. And now we will hear from Kayla Fosfischer. Kayla. Start, Mom, please turn it down on the crime. Thank you. <laughs> Over the rainbow. One day, a classmate asked me, Kayla, why is it they're always smiling? Although I can't remember what I replied at the time, I would now answer because I'm surrounded by my favorite people. Being with my friends has given me an overwhelming sense of comfort and security. Any time we would come back from break, I looked forward to seeing all the familiar faces. There is a universal truth we all have to face, whether we like it or not. 
everything eventually ends. As much as I've looked forward to this day, I've always disliked endings. The last day of summer, the final chapter of a great book, and most importantly, parting ways with a close friend. But endings are inevitable. Leaves fall, you close the book, you say your goodbye. Today, I say goodbye to everything that was familiar, everything that was comfortable. Though I am leaving, and it hurts a lot, my friendships will always remain in my heart. They have been and will remain my solid ground. I'm incredibly grateful to have been part of this particular grade. I'd like to say a big thank you to my teachers who put me through some suffering. Only now, at the end of the year, can I truly say thank you. Each teacher that I've had the privilege to learn from here at Levine opened me up to new experiences and new concepts. Thank you for making me work hard and helping expand my knowledge. Whenever I've said thank you at the end of the class, I meant thank you for your time and not thought much of it. But now, I can most sincerely say thank you for being my teacher. Thank you all for giving me an incredible four years. As a favorite quote of mine states, when life gives you a hundred reasons to cry, show life that you have a hundred reasons to smile. And now we will hear from Talia Fisher. I don't remember much from back when I started living in kindergarten, but I do remember that was when I started to really feel like I belonged to a community. Now, nine years later, this chapter of my life is coming to a close. One piece of wisdom passed down to me at my bat mitzvah was Gamzeya Avor. This too shall pass. It's just that no time, neither the bad nor the good, can last forever. I've had many good times here, and some frustrating ones as well. The most important thing is to cherish the best times and learn from the challenges. When I was in Israel playing grade this past spring, I started to understand Gamze Yavor and its meaning when I saw a shooting star in the Judean desert. What did I do when I saw the shooting star, its heat burning up in the night sky? I didn't make a wish. I just looked up and held on to that memory. I was fully in the moment. That star reminded me that even though positive, happy memories occur, they also end, sometimes very abruptly. When I was separated from the group at the end of the trip after my positive COVID test, I was definitely worried. But then I knew my fear about what would happen next would pass. And I knew that I wouldn't forget all the amazing sights I'd seen. The sunrise over Masada, the quiet hotel late one Shabbat evening, and of course that shooting star. I, was, I also saw on the trip how my class has grown to a responsible, caring community. We began as a group of individuals in our close, cohesive unit. We helped each other up on a very steep part of Mount Sabachot Neilat and supported each other throughout the entire hike. When I was unable to be with the group at the end of the trip, they were so thoughtful. They bought me a bracelet matching theirs so we could all remember the trip. And I won't forget how they all supported me during the GOV in sixth grade, cheering me on when I was at my best. So to my parents, thank you for helping me attend here for the past nine years. To my teachers, you have always had my back when I struggled and helped me through the tough times in my life. And to my friends, I know it hurts to say goodbye, but we don't have to say goodbye. Instead, we can say, Lihitra'o, see you soon. Thank you, Talia. It's time to hear from Eli Krauss. Not leaving empty handed. Well, this is it. Getting out of the carp line and going to my locker and getting ready for the day is now just a memory. I have been with this class for nine years now, and it's tough to accept that a chapter of my life has concluded. I remember when I attended the 2014 graduation. A graduate talked about the first day of eighth grade, when walking through the front entrance seemed like yesterday. And now I couldn't agree with more. It seems like it was only yesterday I walked into Mr. Kendig's kindergarten class and sat down at one of those tiny tables. I know I'm going to miss our Shabbat and Rosh Hodesh celebrations. 
Rather than focusing on what I'm leaving behind, I would like to focus on what I'm taking with me. Levin has taught me that I am part of Am Yisrael, the nation of Israel, and that the Jewish people are stronger when united. Levin has been preparing me for my departure since day one, so that when I go off into my adult life, I will never forget that I am part of a nation with a rich history that must be defended. I know that people will challenge my Zionist views and spew lies about the state of Israel. People spew anti-Semitic rhetoric, whether it is vague or blunt. Instead of viewing anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism as political disagreements, I will take their rhetoric as personal attacks. I am part of the Jewish nation, which functions like a family, and we should always protect family. However, it is often difficult to defend ourselves at such a young age, and we need a deep, sincere grasp of our history as a Jewish nation. Proverbs states, Mavet v'chayim b'yad l'ashon. This translates to, death and life are in the power of the tongue. We are going off to high school as representatives of the Jewish people, and we must really lead by being examples of what it means to be Jews. If we conceal who we are, others who want to spread lies will get their way. Levine has developed a sense of community like no other. Although this chapter of my life has concluded, the friendships I have made, the lessons I have learned, will carry me on into life's next chapter. And now, in the famous words of Patrick Bateman, I have to go return some video tapes. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Zach Ingham. Zach. Fear itself. My grade is at the crossroads between middle and high school. With uncertainty comes fear, and when going to a new school with no one for a friend, Uncertainty is almost everywhere. Yet we never think, what do I really have to fear? Instead of saying, what's the potential good this brings, we ask, what can go wrong? I've battled that negativity for six years. My brain seems wired toward pessimism, so despite the excellent preparation I've received, I'm still not thrilled at the change. <laughs> My grade will enter high school more prepared than that of most peers to be. I realize that I actually have very little to fear. No one in my grade is lacking in any critical skills for high school. I've been taught numbers in kindergarten, addition in first, subtraction in second, division, or er, uh, multiplication in third, division in fourth, geometry in fifth, decimals in sixth, pre-algebra in seventh, and the real stuff in eighth. <laughs> and so, the lesson is that, despite the uncertainty in store for anyone graduating any school, instead of contemplating the potentially negative consequences and ignoring the positive, we must consider both. You have very little to be afraid of. So as Franklin D. Roosevelt once said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Yeshlach rak Elohim echad lefached mimenu. You only have God to fear. Thank you, Zach. And now we will hear from Daniel Tarnavsky. Daniel. beginning of my success. Ten years. Wow. I can't believe I've been at Levine this long. Levine has been my life, my home away from home, and has turned me into the person that I am today. Honestly, I don't even remember walking through the doors of the ECC as a timid three-year-old. I spoke little English because my immigrant family spoke only Russian at home, and I attended Russian Sunshine School. I'd come to a new school with no friends and no real way to communicate. I felt like a total foreigner for a while, but that feeling faded as time went on. My formal education began as a kindergarten student. I always liked reading our little red books and loved playing soccer in the playground. In third grade, I excelled in Hebrew and built a love of reading. It's unfortunate that I missed out on fourth grade, but I started middle school back at Levine. 
my first dance, my first team sport, my first class trip, all of these meaningful new experiences happened here at Levine. I've been at this school for more than two thirds of my life and as I set foot through these doors, I always feel as if I'm walking into my second home. Levine's love of Zionism culminated into our trip to Israel. I'm Israel Chai. The people of Israel are alive. In the homeland of our people, I had the best two weeks of my life. Throughout the years of Levine, I have acquired many friends, learned Hebrew, explored Jewish traditions, and thanks to Ms. Geffen, I've become a proficient writer. And thank you to Mr. Itzkovich for helping me grow as my advisor and great math teacher. I extend my gratitude to all my teachers for equipping me for what lies ahead. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for nurturing me and guiding me through my life while paying tons of money for my Jewish education. <laughs> a person never forgets his home, so Levine, I will always remember you in my heart and make no mistake, I will be back. Thank you, thank you, Daniel. And now we'll hear from Serena Ratner. Serena? Hold on forever. Four years ago, I walked in to Anna Nate Levine Academy, hardly knowing anyone. But once I met and got to know all my classmates, I knew this was going to be home. I've made my closest friends and some of the best memories here. I remember the times when Mr. I and Ms. Hunter would take us to Starbucks during school, or when we all sang our hearts out during Haftalah in Israel, and it felt like we were a family. All of you guys have helped me grow into the person I am today. Therefore, I'd like to give you some advice. Don't be afraid of the future. Everyone is so frightened of what the outcome will be from their actions that we often miss out on what's right in front of us. Next school year, I will be attending Green Hill, a huge school that has many people who don't know who I am. In my grade currently, there are 20 kids, and next year, there will be over 100. Though I look forward to being in a bigger environment with all kinds of religions and races, I will miss my small grade and all the people in it. I'm sad to be leaving the best years and people in my life behind. But over time, I've come to realize that the past and the people who mean so much to me will forever be in my life. Our time together has given me the confidence to move forward wherever life takes me. So since Levine will always be a part of me, I can't miss what I still have. What I've learned in my time at Levine is that it's okay to make mistakes. That's what life's about. Messing up isn't going to ruin the rest of my future, but learning from my mistakes is the important part. As Jay Asher in 13 Reasons Why states, you can't stop the future, you can't rewind the past. The only way is to press play. I would like to thank all my teachers for putting up with me, which I know wasn't easy, <laughs> and helping me get to where I am today. Thank you to my parents for sending me to Levine and for always being my biggest supporters in life. I love you. Thank you to my sister for always being, for always being there if I need someone to talk to. You are my biggest role model and I will miss you just a little when you go to college. <laughs> Lastly, thank you to all my classmates for being the most generous, supportive, and joyful people I've ever met in my life. I'm so proud to call you guys my friends. I am now stepping through the exit door of Levine Academy, but holding all the wonderful memories close to my heart. Lahamshik Kadima Bli Lashokwer. Moving on, but not letting go. Thank you, Serena. Thank you, and now we'll hear from, hear from Ella Satka. Ella?
But what does it really mean? In examining the word, I consider the quality of the beam, beginning with each letter and its impact on me. The first letter, T, represents time and teachers. I have spent infinite hours with my parents, my first teachers. I am forever grateful for their love and, su and support. My Levine teachers have always emphasized a positive, can-do attitude. Toda, thank you. The second letter, H, heroism and hospitality. My teachers, my heroes, have welcomed me with open arms, warm hugs, and reassuring words. I will hold on to them forever. I have bonded with them and my peers especially on our life-changing Israel trip. Those Hebrew lessons have certainly come in handy. Hachayim tovim. Life is good. The third letter, A, acceptance. These 19 individuals have always accepted me for who I am. We have set the standard for other grades to follow as we are the epitome of kindness and respect. I admire all of you and hope that you achieve all that you aspire and value. The fourth letter, N, nurturing, nostalgic. This school is a home and the teachers are parents that have raised and cared for me. I will miss their beautiful smiles and unconditional love. Nitzachon, victory. The fifth letter, K, knowledge. Levine has prepared me for the next phase of my life. I am appreciative that I have learned about my religion and heritage, especially in Israel. Mikol Marandai Hiskati. I have become wiser from every teacher. Kadima. Forward. And finally, S. Self-confidence. The bittersweet ending, symbolizing the conclusion of this speech and my journey my journey through Levine. My school has been the foundation of my education, personality, and identity. It saddens me to depart, but we all must someday. Life offers too many opportunities to miss. My experience at Levine has been sababa, amazing. Thank you, Levine. And I really mean it. Thank you, Ella. And now we will hear from Tana Levine. How lucky I am. Saying goodbye was always going to be difficult, but it took flying all the way to Israel and standing alone in the dark in the middle of the Judean desert to realize just how hard it was going to be. You see, Levine is not just a school. It's not just a place I go to learn. It's a family. I moved here from Australia when I was nine, and I was given the choice between a public school and a school with my last name. <laughs> like every other nine-year-old in the entire world, I picked the school with my name. Unbeknownst to that little nine-year-old, the school would become her core, a place to call home, when at first, nothing felt like it. As in the song, Shevet Achim Ba'achayot, Kan Zevayi, Kan This is home, this is heart, and this is my school, my Levine Academy, and I will miss every moment of it. I'm going to miss the mornings in Mr. I's advisory, the Purim carnivals, and birthdays. I'll miss the color wars, spirit weeks, and kickball games, and most of all, I'll miss the rainy Fridays. I'm going to miss the feeling of morning Shabbats with everyone, Kehila Kadoshas, and school sports victories, the feeling of study halls with supposedly nothing to do, and the joy of singing our favorite songs during class. And finally, I'm going to miss the people who've been there for it all, who celebrated my victories and pushed me through losses, the people I could turn to for help and advice, who watched me grow and push me to thrive. 
my number one supporters, and my very best friends. The following quote by A. A. Milne perfectly describes how I view my time at Levine. How lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Thank you, Tana. Yeah, but before you get your diplomas, it's my turn. And my colleagues and I really know, looking at these girls and boys, they've been in the business a long time, my colleagues. And this is a breathtakingly divine group of kids. They are amazing. They're just amazing. And it's a, quite a spread quite a spread of individual you know, voices. You know, we heard voices that had a spotlight on cultural diversity, Jewish foundation, multi-generational Levine families, the loving camaraderie of their fellow students, appreciation for their teachers, and confidence to take on their world of tomorrow. Consider the voices who grew up first from a very different culture and language. Tana herself, she came halfway around the world to find in this school her new home, her new name, <laughs> along with a place to be a student leader. And there's Daniel who expresses his joy and pride excelling in our native language as well as in Hebrew. And Roni, who has come to know now that the best takeaway is his connection to his Jewish roots and being a mensch, Yara, realized after moving here from Israel last summer that she had to be reborn as an American girl, a significant challenge. And now she sees her development as lifting a great burden off of her shoulders. Uh, we have legacy graduates, parents who are alumni. There's, there's Maya, who appreciates being asked to move out of her comfort zone, but that's a journey that is more possible because of her kind, inclusive, supportive classmates. And Mia used the metaphor of the tree to talk about her strong and solid Jewish foundation. She knows her path is to carry her Jewish values forward. And then there's Zoe, who sees her path through the metaphor of the desert, where pathways need guidance, coming from the little things that others do, fellow students and teachers, like pillars of clouds and fire that make the positive difference in her life. And there are more voices paying tribute to their strong Jewish foundation here. Eli knows he is going forward with a strong sense of himself, being anchored in his Jewish identity, taking on Yisrael with him, fortifying him to defend our people as he expects to be challenged and questioned. Brianna, who has certainly learned the value of hard work, we know that, especially as it helped her to become an elite gymnast, but she knows the value of her Jewish strength is found in the generosity and the compassion she learned here at Levine. And how about the voices of love for one's fellow students? Jordan looks at her fellow students and sees them like brothers and sisters and also appreciates her teachers for pushing her past her limits with their patience and understanding. Brendan realizes that after a year of being home, he had to reacclimate and continue growing, which now means appreciating the care that teachers and students gave him when he re-entered the daily school life. Talia looks back and sees how her class has become a responsible, caring community and ultimately became a close, cohesive team. We have graduates we heard from who truly expressed the value of gratitude like Ella's, who knows how to dig deep, and her voice allows us to understand more fully the meaning of gratitude. She breaks down each of the letters in thanks, and what emerges is a Hebrew vocabulary representing the fullness of life. Kayla 
knows that endings are difficult, but that the feeling of gratitude allows her to see that the Levine experience has been a cherished and privileged one. Sydney wants to take the positive impact that Levine has had on her and return this gift to make a positive impact on others. And she will do that by tapping into the gifts that are here within each human being. We heard from this class, voices, on their confidence in the future. Serena talks about how the confidence she feels to move forward and to be unafraid of the future. And that confidence comes from accepting mistakes and learning from mistakes. Zach feels ready to overcome uncertainty and goes forth with the critical thinking skills to set him apart from his peers he'll have next year and beyond. Shira remarks on the endless encouragement of her teachers, helping her to move far forward from her initial days of feeling shy and quiet. And Addison, who makes me hurt just thinking of her teeth getting pulled right here on campus. <laughs> but, but she can smile now because she feels ready to face the funny and crazy mess <laughs> that both the school experience and growing up can be. And finally, there's Lyle Ethan, who realizes the primacy of proactive individual effort when it comes to achieving one's dreams, as opposed to passively waiting for these moments to fall into your lap. At the same time, Lyle Ethan sees this class for what it truly is. What he sees clearly is the bright, intelligent, and funny people all around him in this class. And to take in all of this, let's pull together Lyle Ethan's appreciation of his fellow students who all serve as inspiration to each other. They are such an inspiration, and they are so motivating to each other, and that will linger for them. And we'll combine that with the love and powerfully positive influence of their parents, with the skills and confidence instilled in them by their teachers. And what we end up with is the essence of a Levine education and experience, launching all of these graduates forward into an elite realm of Menschlichkeit, proud Jewish identity, readiness for the future, and leadership. Mazel tov to this incredible class of 2022. And now I would like to call up the honorary pronouncing of all the names. And we will bring up both Linda McGinnis, our Dean of Innovation and Instruction, and we will bring up Anna Katzman, our Dean of Hebrew Language and Programs.
Yeah, Rabbi Litton's reference there was to uh, this afternoon's this, or this morning's uh, award ceremony, where you know Tana, of course, took home uh, a, a huge stack of, of of certificates. You know, we we thought we felt really guilty afterwards because we thought we should give her a huge uh, discount uh, coupon at, at Great Frame Up or something. You know, so. so, speaking speaking of Tana. We are going to invite her up here to present the eighth, their eighth grade gift of the class. And with Tana, I'm calling up our board president, Mark Grossfeld, who will accept on behalf of Levine Academy. Mr. Grossfeld, come on up. The graduating class of 2022 is honored to be donating an awning to Wendy Weinberg's prayer garden. Wendy Weinberg was an incredible human being who embodied everything that the school is and so much more. Though I was never fortunate enough to meet her in person, the memory she has left in my fellow classmates and teachers shows me the big heart and beautiful neshama that she had. I believe that Wendy Weinberg is watching over us through every prayer that we sing and every Judaic class that we take. So we hope, because of this awning, that you will continue to watch over us through rain and shine. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to thank the graduating class of 2022 for this very generous gift. But truly, you are the gift. Our school has adopted a mission statement that strives to graduate students with integrity, self-confidence, and intellectual curiosity while fostering leadership, creativity, critical thinking, and a love of Jewish values. Class of 2022, you embody each of these characteristics. My charge to you is to continue to exemplify these attributes not just in your high school journey, but throughout your life as a Jewish adult. Congratulations and job well done. And now to present the Mazinka honors as well as Lador Vador and bring us toward our closing prayer, I invite up to the podium Rabbi Jeremy Litton, our Director of Jewish Life and Learning. Rabbi?
feel like I just got pulled from the bullpen, you know? So, I got to experience Israel with these guys. And um, as you guys were each coming up for your speeches, I just had a few uh, little reminders of amazing times. So I'm going to go really quickly. You ready? Sydney, you are the first person of the female persuasion to borrow my tefillin and put them on. And yeah, give me a round of applause, by the way. Tried going for the first time in Israel with me with Mike Stillen, and it was really a special moment for me, so thank you for sharing that with me. Zoe, a trip in an ancient synagogue. <laughs> you were the first person to shed blood in an ancient synagogue in the past thousand years. <laughs> Bree had made an archaeological find, not a joke. She actually found a, what we decided was a perfume bottle. Right? That was collected by the people in our archaeological dig because it was such an amazing find. So give that up for Brie. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but Shira has designed almost every single shirt in our school. Uh, that goes for Kila Pidosha, goes for our trip shirt. And it goes as far as the fact that the t shirt man in Jerusalem offered her a contract to say that whatever she would design, he would print. So that is an amazing accomplishment for somebody graduating eighth grade, nailing their first t-shirt contract deal. And I am so excited to see what art you bring to the world. <laughs> Addy. Wow, Addy, did we have a good time walking on Masada? <laughs> but like, <laughs> you see that face right there. But for real, for real, for real, Addy did not give up. Bike riding, schlepping up mountains. I mean, social commentary along the way, obviously. But you know, <laughs> Addie did not give up along the whole trip and really Yasha Koach because that shows a lot. Jordan. It's a good thing we still have your phone. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a miracle that you got back with your phone, um, actually. And. Um, at the same time as you have the most impressive ability to shop. I know shopping was a skill until I met Jordan, but shopping is a skill and she's amazing at it. Not to mention uh, American Ninja Warrior. I don't know if you guys watch that TV show, but she is a real life American Ninja Warrior and she showed that in Jerusalem at the park. Now these sisters, I don't know what's up with this. So we have one trip in the ancient synagogue and the other one who's friends with jellyfish. <laughs> So, but seriously, they are two of the most sincere students who always voice their minds, are able to come over when anything is going on, and really communicate as adults, and I really tr truly value them as uh, members of this class. Roni. Wow, where do we even start? <laughs> I'm just gonna start with the fact that he spoke about relationships, and I'm gonna put that in reference to Israel, try to leave it there, but then I didn't say it. <laughs> Too far? I'll leave it there. But really, Roni brings the rule. He brings it, and he brings it hard. Maya. First of all, Maya bought me a kippah in Israel. Um, so thank you so much for that kippah. You know, remember we all gave you gifts, you gave me a kippah. Um, she also gave me a note this morning, uh, which was an amazingly thoughtful thing to do um, in terms of just recapping some of the things that she really appreciated about our trip and spending time together. And I can't wait to see the great things that you bring to the world and success that you're gonna to bring towards and honor you'll bring to Levine and your family coming up in the upcoming years. Brendan, thank you for not getting upset at me all the time. <laughs> I mean, I might go over to Brendan more than the average bear to ask him to put on a key phone, right? But he doesn't give me a look. If I ever ask him for anything, he's right there to do it. And it's, it says a lot that if it's somebody who, I wish I had more regular conversation, you know, but you know, when I come over, you're amazingly receptive to whatever we're doing, and you're always there to do the right thing. So thank you, Brendan. <laughs> Ethan Lyle. Ethan Lyle. I know, right? Isn't it great? I just get confused all the time. Like, Lyle, he's like, either one's good. It's, it's fine. It's surprising you don't live at Disney. 
but you know, you know, like, and we're happy during school and things. But Ethan, while was was impressive, right? Kobe was shocked on the trip about how much trivia this kid knows. I mean, I don't know if I call it you trivia, but like, who knows the seven wonders of the world? It's not most people apparently, but he does. Um, where does random countries? He does know. Zach, I know you're looking at me. You got that also. Uh, I, know, I know you did. I know you did. We'll get there. But Ethan, um, it's truly amazing your intellectual honesty. I mean, you bring the rough, you're able to be open minded. It's truly an asset that you'll be able to take with you wherever you go to hear an opinion, not just ready to jump down someone's throat to argue, but to really take it in and think about it. Yara, I hope you realize how incredible your speech was. I remember you coming in the first day, and I remember how frustrating the first weeks were. I think you know, I can. She does. And you stood up here in full English, in full sentences, spoke to a whole crowd of people. That's an insane accomplishment. And you should be so proud of yourself. <laughs> And also, talk about a neshama, by the way. Your relationship with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, deep. Keep that growing. Kayla. So first of all, Kayla and the saga of her bag is a story that I will tell for the rest of my life. Um, if you haven't heard about it from Kayla's parents, then you missed out. Um, but she got her bag back, and it did come back to the house. Give it up for Kayla's bag, everyone. But, on Friday night in Spot, Kayla went to a seminary's girls, um, there was a seminary that was staying in the same hotel as us, and they asked if they could go to the seminary's, um, these are girls who are 19 years old and they're, you're in Israel, and they were going around the room sharing their experiences about, you know, what they appreciate about their Judaism, and it was Kayla, and who else was with you? Yeah. Right, it was Bree, Ella, right? Um, you were also there, Jordan was there. But two of the girls, I know you being one of them, shared their experiences with a crowd of probably 90 girls and shared their own connection to Judaism with a whole class of 19-year-old girls. And the principal came over to me to tell me how impressed he was. So I wanted you to be proud of yourself and we have that recognized here tonight. <laughs> Talia Fisher, you might be the happiest person I know. Um, that is not a joke. Zach, we should all learn something from her. Um, um, no, really. Talia, I remember you would sit in the middle of the Shabbat with your flute, right? We would be playing, and you would bring your flute, and uh, Donna was recounting to me about what you could coach Rhonda, um, and you would be like the cheerleader running across and cheering at like this little age, and like you still have that same enthusiasm. And when we were in Israel, your passion transferred all through the chaperones just to watch you light up at everything. And I remember you saying, and I quote, this is so stinking cool. <laughs> and it, it sticks out in my mind. And uh, it, it, that, that shooting star, your appreciation for its spot, um, amazing. Yeah. Eli. Yes. <laughs> Hashem. Uh, Eli, this is the least controversial speech I've ever heard from you. Um, keep up for Eli. You know, somebody was talking about the school and they were like, yeah, you know, the, everyone's perspective on Israel is a little different. You know, Eli, I'm like, Eli's not being serious when he's telling you that. He's got to see him speak for real. He spoke tonight like I would expect you to defend on a college campus. You're going to do amazing things defending the call Israel, right? Eli, amazing things lying ahead. Your social commentary is needed. You and Lyle are going to make an amazing team running for government one day. Um, Zach. Zach. I appreciate so much your thought process. No, 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 I'm not joking at all here. I love the way you really think things through. I really appreciate the level of depth you bring, but people up here do not know that 
over the past two years, I'm going to embarrass you right now, you will sing songs with everyone else jumping up and down, and you have a soul. Give it up for Zach Soul. <laughs> Daniel Tarnowski. We will not mention the book writing trick. We'll leave that off. All right, fine, 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 fine. Um, or, or when we are going to talk about Okay, back to Daniel. Don't even tell him the story now. Tell him later. Right? But Daniel, do you remember dancing with the Hyalim on Friday night at the Kotel? That's my mind having you on, I don't know if you were on my shoulders or Eli's shoulders. Somebody was on my shoulders. Right? <laughs> dancing at the Kotel on Friday night. There you go. And bringing that Ruach with the Hyalim. I know the girls were bringing you on the other side of the pizza at the same time. Our Friday night conversation, girls, that was one of the deepest conversations I've had this whole year. So thank you for that. Serena. Serena sacrificed her night one night on the trip to go get sushi with me and Tana. Right? There we go. Sacrificed her night to come get sushi with us in order that Tana was able to get a certain test. Right? She may or may not have had something. We, we don't talk about other people's. We don't talk about COVID. Uh, you know. There we go. But uh, Serena's a force to be reckoned with, as she mentioned in her speech. But um, I can't, you want to be on Serena's team. That's the bottom line. Going forward, you want to be on Serena's team. Same with Ella. <laughs> Once we're on the same topic, two people you want on your team is Ella. Ella brings the Ruach, by the way. Um, she really does. She brings the spirit. She brings her whole family along also, which is also amazing. If you want to meet the whole mishpacha, just come to Israel and uh, they'll all be there <laughs> with food. <laughs> um, and the Rachamim's, obviously, um, as well. Um, Tana, um, you painted my beard a few years ago. Um, it did happen. Um, I blew and white on Yomant's mode. And I wanted to suspend you today, just for the fun of it, because it was just annoying. Um, I was the kid who didn't get any awards at graduation, so like, you know, I felt bad for all those who were like watching Tana every second. But for real, you should be so proud of yourself, and your parents should be so proud of you on an amazing accomplishment. Um, why is there no colors in your hair? All right, fine. The Levin family, you know, what it means to me is that there should be a good color going on in the hair. I can't wait to see what the next one will be. I'm going for green. Green? All right. Now, let's talk Mazinka people. What is Mazinka? Well, in the Jewish Ashkenazic tradition, when you have your last child get married, right, they take a broom, and they dance around, and they're like literally sweeping the last child out of the house because they got married. My parents were not Zilcha yet to do that. Um, one day. Um, some of your parents are fulfilling that for their stay here at Levine Academy. So if you are having your last child who is enrolled in Levine, graduating, please stand up so we can recognize you. And give it up for the parents. We are getting up the line and you have put your kids through the academy through and through. We're so honored to have you. We have this amazing sign on the other side of the room. You guys will see it later. You should have seen it sometime long ago. Um, inspired by, this has been around for Ms. Geffen. You're going to have to help me out here. I don't know, 20 years? At least that? 30 years? Longer. It's a long time. Um, yeah, but you're like, you're like 24 years old, um, so every graduate's name is on this chart over here, and it's titled me Door to Door, and every year our art teacher, Mrs. Kramer, adds on the next level of students' names and stands in Levine Academy, proudly displayed on the wall back there, and your names will be added to the list as well, of course, right? They're gonna have to figure out after this year how to get the names going around even bigger, if you notice. It's a, it's a question and discussion. But I'd like to call up Mrs. Haddad. Is she here? Oh, there we are. To help me, and if everyone else could join, and sing a little song about Ndor Lador. We are home and we are 
And for one last time, guys, stay where you are, stay where you are, stay where you are, right there. Go back to each other. One last time, guys. Parents, you should be proud of your children who shine lights through their great actions and all of us they do. Look here, all the parents, all the students here over in the crowd.
Don't forget your bags and your diplomas, you might need them. <laughs> 